Hello. This video is a sort of demonstration, not really a guide, for a night at the theater. Most videos I found when I was doing research before doing this quest had people in max stats and gear, or if they had a more appropriate account for where someone might be for this quest, they had tons of experience, high kill count numbers, and so I wanted to see what it would take for someone who didn't have any of the experience going through a night at theater on the easy mode. For context, I don't have any Grandmaster quests done, so not Monkey Madness 2, Dragon Slayer 2, um, Song of the Elves, or Sins of the Father. I do have one Zolra kill count for Diary, and not much else in the way of bossing. I did get Jad on the second attempt, if that gives you a good idea of where I'm at as far as skill. Here's my stats. Um, they're low 80s for the melees, magics at 80, and prayer at 72. I don't think you need much higher than this. It only took me five attempts, and they were long attempts. Each one was about 40 minutes to an hour. I got two Verzik on each attempt. I did die on some of the other bosses on the way there, um, but I will go through each boss, what I did, um, what gave me trouble and what I would do differently as well. So this is what I ended up bringing for my final successful attempt. It is a mixture of ranged and strength gear. Um, magic I didn't really worry about too much for bonuses. I brought a BGS. Um, I don't think it was actually necessary in the end, but it is what I brought. Um, you want a magic ranged and melee switch, so I just have the Abyssal Whip with the Dragon Defender, and then Trident of the Swamp and Toxic Blowpipe. I like the Blowpipe because it's so fast, especially for Verzik. Um, Fort Tick was nice to avoid some of the attacks, but we'll talk about that later. I also brought the Crystal Halberd as my spec weapon. I only ever used it on Bloat and Verzik. Um, it costs a little bit but I think it was worth it in the end, but you do want a spec weapon just so you can dump the spec when you have it. I did bring a super combat potion and a ranging potion. If you bring them, I'd recommend you use them. I didn't use them as well as I could have. I'm not very good at using potions, honestly. One of my attempts, I brought almost full brews and restores, and I ended up failing that attempt on uh, part three of Verzik because I didn't have enough space to bring bandages. So I'd actually recommend bringing enough food that you're willing to drop to stock up on bandages. Because the brews don't, they, they heal your stats, um, your hit points and stuff, and your restores bring you back up. And then you have the bandages that act like um, super pots and staminas. And I was actually running out of staminas. Um, so this is actually, I think, the perfect amount, for me at least. You'll find out what works best for you. This is what I brought. No set bonus, yeah. Um, but you want to bring the best gear you can. I did luck out for the BGS. I had bought it when it was at its lowest. Um, it's now um, probably closer to I think 17 mil at the making of this video, but I bought it for like six or seven. So I lucked out there. Um, but I would recommend if you have a two-handed spec weapon to bring it in to start because what you'll do is you'll swap to your other weapons and that'll leave the inventory spot. When I'm, my first attempts I walked in like this and when I wanted to swap to my um, spec weapon I couldn't because my inventory was full. Um, so that's something to consider as well. The first boss is the Maiden. She's not too difficult but you do have to pay attention. Most of her mechanics will heal her if you're either standing in it or let them go by. The first one you see here are these blood splats. One of them will hit the tile you're standing on, and the other two are kind of randomly around. If you stand in them, they'll hit you for like four or five, and they'll heal her the same amount. You'll see it here, yeah. And you don't want to stand it because it'll it'll knock you down pretty fast. Her other one are these nylos or ticks that she'll spawn, and if they make it to her, with uh, they'll heal her for the amount of health they have left. It's not a big deal. Um, in easy mode, I think you can pretty much ignore the mechanic if you want. Um, you see it healed her for 32, and you'll do that much damage in two or three hits with the whip. 
these blood spots also have a chance of turning into blood that walks around the room, and it behaves in the same way as the throne blood does. If you stand in it, it'll heal you, so you just want to avoid that. And if you're low on health, air or prayer, you can just hold out for the fin end of the fight, and when the boss dies, you'll be healed up to full. So instead of like wasting a brew or a pot, you can just go for it, and then you'll get healed up for the next fight. So here's the second boss, the boat. You want to enter the arena when he's on the other side of the column from you, because if he's on the same side, he's going to hit you with these flies, and he's invulnerable anyway until he starts going down, which you'll see in a second. Um, his little cysts will blink, and then he'll take a knee, and you want to run around, and then if you have a spec weapon, spec him out. If you're out of special attack, that's the flies right there, um, and they attack really rapidly too. Um, if you're out of special attack and you don't have a spec weapon, you just want to hit him with your whip. I'm using a crystal halberd healer because it hits uh, big dudes pretty good. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the third one off. I probably could have. I was just a little afraid because he'll do the stomp and roar, and then it'll hit you for like, a big number, and it's not good. After you've like activated him, um, he'll go into this phase where he'll start dropping body parts from the ceiling, and you'll see their shadow on the floor um, pretty easily. They're easy to avoid, but if you're trying to keep an eye on him and yourself, you can lose that, and then when it hits you, it'll stun you, and then if he's turning the corner on you, he'll hit you with a bunch of those flies, which isn't a good time. But you just want to keep an eye on him, and when he takes a knee, just go behind him, spec him out if you have special attack, and then whip him. You can fit four whips in, depending on where you're at. If you're far away, I'd play it safe and hit three. If you're right on top of him, you can squeeze five in, if you're willing to risk it. But that's up to you and how uh, dangerous you want to play. This clip coming up from a previous attempt was uh, me getting basically stacked out. I got hit with one of the things, I wasn't paying attention, and he's hitting me with these flies. Um, and he starts running pretty fast too, and I almost, he'll turn around, I almost went and got hit from the other side. But you just need to be patient, keep an eye on him and yourself, you're going to be keeping space. Uh, and then as soon as he goes down, slap him up. You are in danger of running out of run if you take too long or if your DPS isn't good enough. Um, but I usually didn't have a problem with that. After the second and fourth boss, you get access to a supply chest that has bandages in it. These things are great because they heal you, restore your prayer, your run energy, and give you stamina effect, as well as act like a super combat that also does range and magic. You want to stock up on these, and if you have any left over like I do here, I should have eaten one and then picked one up before the next room. Oh, fuck. This is the Nylos room. It's the one I worried about the most going into this, just because there's so much going on at once, it's easy to like trip yourself up. Basically, I found the easiest way was to turn auto retaliate off for the first part of this, and then prioritize attacking the ones that are attacking you, then going after either the range or mage nylos. And the way this right room works is you have three different different three different attack styles. You have the blue ones which mage, you have the green ones which range, and you have the gray ones which melee and you have to use the same attack style that they use. Otherwise, they become immune, and you can't damage them. They will eventually self-destruct after maybe about 10 seconds, and they do about 8 to 10 damage to you. Um, that's why I like to prioritize the melee attacking ones last, because I didn't even bother trying to keep track of how long they were alive, and you can walk up to them to attack them, and then they blow up and deal damage to you, and you've wasted just a fraction of a second. There's also these larger Nylos that come out, and when you kill them, they will split into two random types. So that melee one broke into a, another melee, and then arranged. And the basic rhythm I did is I would swap to a style and take out all of that color, swap to another one and take out that color. Right now there's lots of melee ones on the field, but again, walking up to them, they blow up. If you let them destroy the pillar, I think it does a lot of damage to you. I think on one attempt they did, but for most of them, all the pillars were still were still stuck. And this room goes on for a long time, too, and it's 
kind of tense because you're juggling so many different things at once. But eventually they'll stop coming and then you can clean them up and they'll blow up eventually on their own if you just sit there and wait. And you'll have the boss come. You have a couple seconds to um, heal up if you need to, get your prayers ready. I recommend the hotkeys to swap. But the big Niles will come down and you want to prioritize swapping your prayer first and then your attack style. If you hit them with the wrong attack style, instead of making him invulnerable, it will heal him. Uh, which isn't great. It's a pretty bad feeling to because you're trying to protect yourself from getting hurt because he can't hit you pretty heavy. Um, and then if you miss the attack style or the prayer, um, he'll hit you and then you fucked up the switch and then you'll hit him and he heals. It's just not a great time. You definitely want to make sure that you turn your uh, attack style back on. Um, I was stressing out about it the first couple attempts, but after I've gone through it five times, it really was not too stressful. Um, I just went through, you see I almost messed that up. There's a, a little bit of leeway, so don't stress about being tick perfect at all. Really, you just gotta make sure you're paying attention the whole time. It's easy to mess up, and then you're done. You can also, when you're near the end, play it a little risky, because you're gonna have that heal at the very end, get your prayer and your health back up. So here's Soda's Egg. He's got Jad-like mechanics. I like to open up by dumping my BGS. If you don't have one, you can probably just spec. Um, but he'll shoot these balls that are either red or black, and he also melees. In entry mode, you can be in melee range and not do some weird dance, but you do need to watch his um, magic and range attacks. The black one is ranged, and the red one is mage. As long as you are on the correct prayer before he hits you, you're fine. If you're off prayer, it will turn your prayers off for a couple seconds, and you'll get hit. At, I think, 66 or 70 or whatever, twice, he'll do this maze. In a party, he'll select a random person and people have to follow them. But solo, all you have to do is follow the red line. Once you're like four tiles out, um, this red tornado will follow you, and it's pretty nasty if it catches you. So it depends on the maze layout. If you get a nice straightaway, you're good. But if you gotta like do a weird dance at the beginning and catch up, it's pretty easy. But really, this guy's not that bad. My first couple attempts, I tried doing some weird stuff. Um, I tried like moving way between attacks so he wouldn't melee me, but he doesn't melee that hard. Um, my second attempt, I tried ranging him the whole time, which you can do but it took forever, uh, and I wouldn't recommend unless you're trying to reach the whole um, rate. He also has that big red ball attack, which will hit you no matter what. You can't pray against it. It hits for 20 in entry mode. I think in a full party or in a normal raid, it'll just straight up kill you if you don't do the mechanic correctly. I don't know how to do it correctly, so I'm going to try and tell you how it works. But you go through the maze twice, and then you're on um, the last third. And it's very nice that he teleports you next time. Really, this guy is pretty tough, but after a couple attempts, you kind of get into the rhythm, pay attention to his attacks, and it's no problem. Feel free to use Piety. Um, if you have it, because we're going to get more bandages. If you have bandages, just use If you're kind of sparse, you might want to save them. But, there you go. Surface. He's probably the easiest boss in the raid, at least on entry mode. I don't know how it is for everyone else. But he's got three phases. First phase, you just stand on the dudes until they stop spawning. They make them stronger, or they heal them a little bit. I'm not really sure how it works. Second phase, he starts spitting poison at you, and you can usually get two shots off, and then move two tiles away, and then get two more shots off, at least if you're using a blowpipe. Now you want to beat two tiles because it has a negative effect, and it'll poison you. 
I had poison's not too bad. I think I got hit with it every single attempt I made. The poison pools do stay on the grounds until the end of the fight. Uh, as long as you are constantly attacking and doing enough damage, it shouldn't be a problem. Usually I'll go around the whole arena once and a quarter or once and a half. It's not a problem. Third phase, he gets up and starts beating his wings at you. And if you attack him while he's looking at you, he will reflect that damage back at you. And it hurts a lot. Easy thing to do is to just get your whip out and then wait for him to turn away from you and hit him once and then walk away. Make sure that you stop attacking him because he can turn and look at you. If you think you're clever, you can try and get two hits in. If you stand too close or under him, he'll hit you a couple times. Not a lot, but you don't want to let that happen if you can help it. Especially if you ate a hard hit earlier. But really, it's not too difficult. I think it's the easiest fight in the theater. Once he's done, the poison will disappear, and then you can walk through the barrier, and you want to make sure you pick up this staff off the skeleton, or you're going to have a bad time. I don't know what happens if you don't, but I know you're not going to have a good time, that's for sure. Alright, here's Verzik. Her fight is split up into three parts. The first part's pretty easy. The second part is the hardest part, in my opinion. And then the third, well, if you get to the third, you can probably beat it. But you gotta get past the first two phases. So you start out, get next to Pillar, talk to her, use two specs of the staff, and then hit her. From here, you can either wait for your spec to recharge, I think it's 35%, but if you wanna just poke her a bunch, you want to wait until she lifts her legs up, and you can go out and hit her twice. I feel like I get three off most of the time, but you want to make sure you get behind the pillar because if you get hit, it's hit for like a 40 or 50. Um, if the pillar goes down and hits you, it's going to be in for another like 40 or 50. Now, once you kill her, you want to get off of the pillars because they'll hit you anyway. Then we're in part two. You want to pray range because she'll throw out these little like white and purple turn up looking things. And they're going to hit you for a 10 almost every time. Um, as long as you take a step away from where she threw it at, you're going to be fine. But you have to constantly move, click her, move off, click her. It's not difficult, but there's so much going on that it took me a long time to get into this rhythm. This is the best attempt, and I still got hit a couple times. She also has this electric ball that'll come out and it'll shock you. That's unavoidable. She'll spawn Nylos, which will come out and attack you and they'll explode. If you're on the right style, you can go ahead and hit it. If not, don't worry about it. She will spawn these purple guys and hit it with a um, poison attack. So if you have a DDS, you want to walk over and hit it. Or if you have a blowpipe, you want to tag it with it. Otherwise, it's going to constantly heal her up. And you don't want that to happen as much as possible. Once she gets down to... Um, about 30% she'll spawn these red nylos and these will sit around like the ones from the maiden and then after a moment they will pop and heal her for a portion of their health. You will start praying mage because she throws out these red attacks um, that I think track onto you and then just dodge the rest of them. You know, make sure she, you don't attack her while she's summoning the nylos, the red ones, or else you'll heal her as well. So, there's different ways to do it. You can kill them both right away and then go back on her, which is what I try to do. But if they only have like two hit points left, you can go off of them and attack her. Then begins part three. 
She turns into a spider. She's going to follow you around. She does Jad-like attacks, where she will throw out ranged attacks after a green sort of aura, and then mage attacks after a blue. I just prayed mage the whole time. She doesn't do enough damage fast enough, I think, to warrant switching in entry mode. Do you want to try and keep away from her? Her melee attacks, I don't think, are too accurate, but they do hit for quite a lot of damage. You still have the Nihilus come out, you want to avoid them, and if they're on the right attack stop, you can hit them. Uh, they'll slow, they'll hit you for a little bit. It's fantastic. You can run through her if you need to, because she will attack you when you're underneath. You can also use it to heal. At some points, she will begin to do a web attack, which you see here. And you just want to run in circles. You can attack in between every run. It looks really sketchy. Cool. Um, I just, you know, went for it. If you get grabbed, she'll attack you. You can't run. Her other um, special attack is that she will send out this sort of missile. And you need to run on top of a yellow spot in the room. So you want to keep your stamina up. You know, your run energy. That's what the bandages help with. Because if you run out of run energy and you're on the other side of the room, you're going to get hit out for a while. You see that here? I think the last attack is this weird green orb that she sends out, and it is like a one-hit kill in normal mode, I think. Um, it just hits for, I think, 20 damage here. Really, this isn't as intense as part two, I think. If you can make it this far, it's pretty much more the same. Um, just less guaranteed damage, and she doesn't heal as much. about 20% she'll send up this purple tornado. If you get hit by it, it hits you for damage and heals her. Ah, we did it. Holy shit. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. Took five tries. And that was pretty close at the end. We got left. One dose of Superstore, a bandage. I was saving that bandage for the very end. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, let's open this bad boy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Exactly what we want. I probably spent a lot more than that. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. The only changes I would have made to my run would have been probably dropping the super combat and ranging potion for more Karam wands so I could drop those for more bandages during the run. I don't think I actually used the super combat potion. Maybe I used it once, but I'm pretty sure three or four doses got dropped. And I don't know if four doses of ranging potion are better than one bandage, but just the stamina bonus at the end of the fight with Verzik was just so worth it. Um, it was easily doable with these stats. It was a fun challenge. It took five tries. Some of those tries were very frustrating, especially in the beginning, but in the end, it was definitely fun and worth it. Um, the rest of the video is probably just going to be me showing off my deaths. Unfortunately, I didn't record the third and fourth run. But there's plenty of deaths to go around, so enjoy. Oh, okay, you gotta start all the way over. None of your shit. Fuck, dude!
died.